Hey, just a warning, while Fuller House is a family show, the Fullest House podcast is not. Listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to Full House. Hey, wait a minute. This is the Fullest House podcast. I'm not Uncle Jesse. I'm Mark Green. And I'm Harrison Bloom. And I'm Zach Horowitz, not Dave Coulier. People get that confused a lot. You're not Dave Coulier, but you are Uncle Joey. Yes. yes. You, through various time travel mechanics, you were the character on the hit sitcom Full House. Yes. Yeah. Guys, speaking of the hit sitcom Full House. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Full House? <laughs> Remember Full House? Remember Full House? There's a lot of Full House in this episode of Fuller House. We haven't used that that line in a while, but it's very it's very relevant here. Yeah. I uh I know we normally have like a big long description for each episode, but can our description for this episode just be Remember Full House? <laughs> Remember Full House? <laughs> yeah. That's really what this episode was. Is that it was really just one long, hey, Remember Full House? This is full house now. This is yeah. the it's and it's not even I don't think this is even the one where they like reference full house the most or flash back to full house the most. But I think this is the episode that most heavily features only our characters from full house. Yeah. yeah. The other characters are there and they show up and they're a part of it and they're pretty magical. <laughs> but this is very much this episode belongs to. Good old Uncle Jesse, Uncle Joey, Danny Tanner, Aunt Becky, DJ, Steph, Kimmy. Michelle's not here. <laughs> She's off in New York running her fashion empire. Yeah. Remember Michelle? Remember arguably the biggest character in Full House? It's <laughs> who so just weird. isn't here and we never talk about her. <laughs> her presence. It's like this big gaping hole and nobody mentions yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Well, because she's off in New York running her fashion empire, Harrison. Yeah, that's Were you not paying true. attention to the first episode of Four House? They've mentioned her twice, but it's the sort of thing of like if randomly in an episode, DJ and Stephanie mentioned that they had another sister, like I'd be surprised. Yeah, I would be like, yeah. wait, they had another sister? Oh, right. Yeah. They have <laughs> another sister? Are they talking about Kimmy? Is this like a really sweet moment where they're like, Kimmy, you're like a sister to us? Oh, no, they have a full other sister who was the star of a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, she's too busy. She's off uh, in her own spinoff uh, fighting her clone, who is the other Olsen twin. You see, now they actually have to use both of them as the separate yes, the characters. reason why the reason why there's two of them now is because michelle before running her fashion empire became a scientist and successfully cloned herself but now she has an evil twin there was a yeah. teleporter accident <laughs> <laughs> it created two of her and now they gotta live together as roommates it's a wacky sitcom making their way in the big city <laughs> <laughs> running their fashion <laughs> empire True Jackson. I mean, Michelle Fuller, VP. Oh Michelle Tanner. God. Tanner. Fuller, Damn it. Fuller is DJ's married name. It did not uh, transfer to, to Michelle or Stephanie. I just, I think I'm we did this sure last episode. I'm pretty sure I made the exact yeah, same yeah, mistake exactly. last episode. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I just think that's why I bring it up. I think it's funny that we keep doing that. Yeah. So uh, they, they recreate the opening or not the opening, but the moment from the first episode where the, the, the dads all come in one by one wearing their same clothing. Well, not only do they do that, Harrison, they also do a flashback <laughs> to the first episode of Full House. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've done that. Remember Full House? Yeah, <laughs> let, let, let's go through chronologically yeah, a little yeah, bit right, because there's, right. there's one non-Full House related thing that happens up front that is kind of important, which is that Steph is having trouble sleeping oh, because yeah. she keeps having these dreams... Um, that are like prophetic dreams. There are these weird men having a dance party. This masked man comes out. Everything is going wrong and Kimmy's not pregnant. So she's worried that she's some sort of prophet all of a sudden and Kimmy's <laughs> not pregnant. It's I, I very much went to the dream from Fiddler on the Roof um, to, to the story of Joseph from the Bible. There were real like biblical things going on. Is what I'm my, saying. Where my mind went was 
uh, why does Steph's prophetic dream seem a lot like an Edgar Allan Poe story? I don't know. There's dark fog, men in masks mm-hmm. having a dance party, and and there's a baby who's not there. There's there's a body <laughs> in the floorboards. Yes, <laughs> this is true. It's this Michelle's true. body. That's she's where been, Michelle is. She's been there the whole time. <laughs> yeah. We've that we found Michelle. I, I also want to point out. Um, Twin Fashion Empire, that's maybe our spinoff for the episode. Yes, that's our spinoff. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have to fight crime, of course. They, they do have to fight crime. <laughs> oh, yeah. On yeah. the side. Um, <laughs> you know, like every other Tuesday. You know, they and um, <laughs> Tyler, if you just want to be working on a possible title for that show, um, some sort of play on twins or doubles <laughs> or something, I'd really appreciate that, but no p- pressure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we also establish... The the full house dads are coming and Yay. DJ and Steph flash back to when they first arrived in the pilot of Full House. And it doesn't really show us anything. It does show us something, Mark. It shows us remember Full House. It shows us remember Full House. It's a setup because then in the next moment, they're all going to arrive wearing the exact same clothes, carrying the exact same things they were in the pilot. Yeah. But I just mean usually a flashback reveals something. And even in this show, when they flashback, often it's like to reflect on a moment. But this is just like, hey, remember the very beginning of Full House? Remember that they arrived at one point? Remember yeah. the very beginning of Full House? Well, we're doing it again most of the way through season three of Full House. Remember how Uncle Jesse and Uncle Joey moved in with us? <laughs> Crazy, right? And it's like, yeah, I do remember because there was a whole TV show about it. <laughs> you don't need to flash back to it. I remember the TV show. I was deathly afraid this was going to be a clip show of Full mm. House, not even Ooh. Fuller House. <laughs> That is, I would not put it past this show. That would be very, yeah. very bad. But uh, like we said, they all come in. They're wearing the same costumes that they were in the pilot. Um, there is copious applause from the audience. It's throughout the whole yeah. episode. Throughout the whole episode. It's, it's really annoying. There's a lot of applause. We, we've talked about it before. This, ep- this show has a thing where anytime anybody does anything regardless of how impressive it is, and usually it is not impressive, the audience (laughs) applauds. And it's just the sort of thing where I'm like, are they applauding because John Stamos is here? Because they usually do that. Is it because he's wearing the same costume? Because that does not take, that does not deserve applause. Yeah. It felt like the moments were more laugh worthy and instead we were getting applause and it was, I don't want to sound mean, but like in this episode, it was really annoying me how yeah. much applause there was. Oh, yes. yeah. No, it, it no was, you, yeah. you're right. And you should say it. Really <laughs> annoying. Um, and I mean, I, I assume there isn't a real audience that the applause has been put in. But maybe, right. yeah. maybe it hasn't. It doesn't have a, a Cheers was filmed in front of a live studio audience thing. Yeah. Um, a live studio audience. Um, Cliff says it like that. Yeah. Um, Anyway, this isn't about Cheers. This is about Full House. Fuller House, shit. The- it's actually Tanner House. Tanner House. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Imagine if it was called Tanner House. That's just weird. It would be really <laughs> weird. Um, Kimmy informs Danny that she's possibly carrying his next grandchild. And Danny had a really good reaction, which is he just turns to Stephanie and says, Really? There was no one else? <laughs> Which I enjoyed. That was I good. also enjoyed it. There there were a lot of grading things in this episode, but I enjoyed that. Um, and then DJ points out they're wearing the same thing in case you didn't notice. Uh, I, I was not a fan of that moment. But guys, also, Aunt Becky is here. She broke out of prison. <laughs> she broke out of prison. She has the baby. For like the first time ever. Yeah, she's carrying all the luggage uh, because because Jesse is a bad partner, <laughs> which we've kind of established before. <laughs> but guys, I have I have a bone to pick with this because Becky was not in the pilot of Full House. So this is wrong. It's no. all wrong. It's perverted. They've they've destroyed the integrity of Full House. They've destroyed the timeline. 
by the way, Tyler suggests Double Trouble as a name for the sitcom about Michelle and her twin. Yes, that that it's a good name. I like effect. that. Uh, Double yeah. Trouble. It's trademarked. Um, we said it here, which means it's official. Original title: Do Not Steal. <laughs> Copyright: Good Time Boys LLC, twenty twenty one. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for handling the legal side of things, Zach. Thank you. Listen, it's, you know, understanding the legality of everything. And if you say something in a confident enough voice, people will believe you know what you're doing. Yeah. It mm. worked for the people on Fuller House. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's true. It's true. I, I want to say that's true. I also don't know exactly what you're referring to when you say that. It worked for the people on Fuller House. It worked in the pitch meeting. They were oh, like, okay. is, yes. this, is this show a good idea? Is it, is it good to have this much laugh track in this episode? Yes, definitely. It's a great idea. Well, I believe you. <laughs> exactly. It's because he said it with so much confidence. Steve and DJ are going on their first date. Everyone points out that this is technically their third first date. Details, details, details. Danny says, I have a surprise. Let's all go out in front of the house. Becky says, oh, no problem. I'll just watch the kid alone, I guess. And it's like, Becky, Jesse's been doing that constantly. You begged to have this baby and then have not been doing anything. We have only ever seen Jesse with little Pamela. And now you're complaining. He's a stay at home dad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's a stay-at-home <laughs> yeah. dad. He only does this, and now you're like, oh, I guess I'll watch the baby for the afternoon. Nobody asks how I feel. It's like, come on, Becky. You can't take an afternoon. This baby was your idea. <laughs> it was your idea. You made him get this baby, <laughs> then left him alone to deal with her. Uh, and now you don't want anything to do with the baby. I just think it's a little messed up, Becky. I think maybe you should go to prison for it. <laughs> or for other crimes. For that specifically, yes. She's going to go to mom jail. Some, something, something, Aunt Becky's kids. I forget exactly what the details are. <laughs> but Danny has rented the car from the intro of Full House, and they're going to drive it. Remember Full House? Remember Full House? They get in, the theme song to Full House starts playing. DJ says, huh. Or maybe it's Steph says, why does this song always play when we when we drive this car and they start singing the intro to Full House as it transitions into the intro to Fuller House? Guys, this opens up so many questions. Oh, yeah. Uh, one, why does every character become Deadpool every time the, the old people come onto the show? Like they just they get this fourth wall awareness. Yeah, this was this all is the true. time. <laughs> there were earlier lines when DJ was like. Oh, when when dad and Uncle Joey and Uncle Jesse were here, it always felt like every problem got solved in 30 minutes and everything was fine. And it's I think, honestly, here's my here's my theory. Okay? Go ahead. Because, I mean, DJ and Steph have been in a sitcom their entire lives. Yes. This is all they know. They are in the Truman Show, essentially, for the sake of argument. Mm -hmm. So all they know is a 30 minute sitcom. They're unaware of the problems going on in the real world. Aunt Becky is gone, and they're just like, oh, she's just like, she's taking a leave of absence from the show, and meanwhile, she's in prison. Uh, <laughs> what does this have to do with them breaking the yeah, fourth yeah, wall? Yeah, yeah, how does, yeah. How does this explain because things? Because once you are in a sitcom for long enough, they're starting, they're starting to notice. They're starting, starting to pull to the chain. Oh, okay, they're starting okay. to pull the curtain back on the entire scheme mm. and are noticing, hey, we're going to break the fourth wall. But they don't say it like that because they're not aware they're in a sitcom, so they don't know what the trope is. But they're starting to, like, pull back the curtain on this little Truman Show kind of scenario. I don't know. I, I'm tired. I need sleep. <laughs> um, so, so Zach had a mental breakdown. That's one possibility. Also, it's just this weird thing where I understand what the point is. Full House was a very famous sitcom, so whenever Full House rears its head, they're like, hey, wasn't life like a sitcom when we were kids? Because yes, yes, it was. But you know what, DJ? Your life is still like a sitcom 
because exactly. it's still a sitcom. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, Mark. Because they're starting to understand it because <laughs> they've been living in a sitcom the entire oh, lives. I really like this and, vibe for you, Dad. And, and, and they're pulling back the curtain <laughs> and they're, they're exposing everything. They're going to be like, Ooh, we're gonna we're gonna break this case right open. You ever notice how we got a problem and it's always solved within thirty minutes? I mean, not this one. This one doesn't get solved within the thirty minutes, but it probably gets solved within like the next thirty minutes. So they realize they're like, "Hey, this is like really weird." They even mention it's like a Tanner Fuller magic kind of thing, like a magic something you'd only see in a sitcom. Guys, we're in the Truman Show. And in the final episode, they meet God. Exactly. That's where we're going. They meet God. They no, no. They meet God, and it's Dave Coulier. <laughs> okay. That, that's a thing. This is this is the most unhinged I've ever seen you. <laughs> I'm falling apart. This show has finally broke me. Well, here's here's okay, okay. I'm gonna. I you've said this like twice, <laughs> so I'm gonna stop you. Here are my other questions about this. Yes. So the theme song to Full House is just like a song. Yeah. Right? That's the implication. Yes. Because, like, I'm glad they throw that out because otherwise it's like, does Full House exist in the Fuller House universe? Well, okay. Isn't there isn't there an episode where they say or where, like they mention one of the actors by name, like they mentioned John Stamos by name or something like that. Well, there, there's an episode where there's, there's the one song, um, which is the song that's about Dave Coulier and someone as they're leaving the scene goes, Oh, you know who that song's about? Implying Dave Coulier exists in this universe. Yeah. There's one where DJ mentions, uh, the talk or the view or whatever one Candace Cameron grows on and she was a host on it. Yes. I want to see an episode of Fuller House, or Full House, I guess, where Uncle Joey enters a Dave Coulier lookalike contest, mm. but he doesn't win. Of course. <laughs> yes. He gets, like, third place. Well, they're like, yes. it's weird, because, like, you look, like, your features, you look a lot like him, but just, like, much older, which is <laughs> weird. You look a lot like him, but, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go with John. Look, I understand that like you got like the bone structure and everything, but John he, he just he just got the right vibe, you know? He just got the right vibe. He came with a Mr. Woodchuck puppet. <laughs> I was about to say that. I was about to add that as you well. You left yours at home. <laughs> you left yours at home. Yeah. I put air quotes around that. Implying Mr. Woodchuck is dead. Implying that I don't believe you. And everyone knows there's only one Mr. Woodchuck and John clearly has it because he's like the biggest Dave Coulier look like. I don't, I don't know, man. Look, that on my level, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to hear Mr. Woodchuck say fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Woodchuck. Is that fuck mode of wood? Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Moving on. <laughs> Guys, the theme song ends, we cut to a new scene, and I'm immediately much happier because we meet up with Rocky and J-Money. Yay! Yay. The best characters. This episode, it's it's really... All the new characters that Fuller House has introduced and developed to this point are my favorite characters. Yeah. I legitimately love all of them and would watch a show that's just them. And then anytime mm-hmm. the people from Full House show up, I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. Like necessary I'll watch evil. this for a while. I only want to see Mr. Woodchuck, who's not in this episode. No, he's Which not. Which is real unfortunate. They mention the kids a lot, but they don't mention Mr. Woodchuck. They mention Joey's kids, but not his true son, <laughs> Mr. Woodchuck. Wait, is Mr. Woodchuck his son or his lover? <laughs> I mean, I feel like, well, he does mention he has a wife. But I imagine, like... We've brought up him having sex with Mr. Woodchuck. We've we've brought that up before. He's he's secretly having an affair with Mr. Woodchuck. I just just want... Speaking of him being the true son, I just want, like, a sequence where Mr. Woodchuck is, like, 
looking out into the night sky, the clouds and stars swirl together and gather and Dave Coulier appears in them and he just tells Mr. Woodchuck, you are my son <laughs> and the one true king. And Mr. Woodchuck's just like, Daddy. you have forgotten who you are and therefore you have forgotten me. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'll have one, father. <laughs> I want a remake of The Lion King with Mr. Woodchuck as Simba. Yes. That would be wonderful. Let's do it. Murderer! Let's, yeah, let's, get, let's get Disney on that shit, guys. We just gotta call oh him. It'll happen. It's too good an opportunity to pass up. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Is the light made of wood? <laughs> Beautiful. 10 out of 10. Wonderful. Is the kingdom made of wood? Wood? So, where were we in the episode? Rocky and Jay Money, they're doing homework. They're doing homework, yeah. but they're kind of bored by it. And Jay Money yeah. goes, uh, what could we do that's not homework? Or maybe Rocky says that. I forget. I think Jay Money says it because Rocky, because Rocky is in like, well, we could do this. And then goes in and, and kisses Jay Money. They do Jay a Money in, the, in In the immortal words from, I believe, season one, Jay Money's getting some honey. J Money's getting some honey. They're doing yeah. a smooch. They're, they're doing a smooch. They did the smooching. They did a smooch. They're making out. They're, they're mid smooch when in walks in Ramona. Ramona. Who just <sighs> kind of stands there and is watching him smooch. Well, J, J Money has a wonderful line that I really love where he says, where like Ramona comes in and goes like, uh, guys, and J Money says, uh, a little busy here. Magic is happening. <laughs> <laughs> It's a miracle. I love it. Someone yes. is attracted to J Bunny. <laughs> it's a miracle. Wonder of wonders, miracle of miracles. Musical bits. One step closer to getting Rocky to step on him. Yes. Before before one can get stepped on, one must smooch. Mm. The old adage passed old down ad through the well, ages. Everyone knows, you know, first base is kissing, second base is getting stepped on. First comes uh, love, then comes marriage, then comes getting stepped on by your goth girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're smooching, but then Ramona comes in and she says, Well, he says, I'm down. busy, magic is happening. And she says, All right, I'll wait. <laughs> So she, just sits down. so she just waits in the room and watches them it's really great. and it's really weird it's great uh, and i know we haven't gotten to this point in the episode yet but i would like to at this point instantly nominate ramona for sad boy of the week ramona uh, gets a nomination yes for sure <laughs> for sure um, but rocky rocky breaks it off and says like no we got to check on ramona which i kind of like yeah, yeah that in that like rocky's becoming part of the family she's becoming one of their friends yeah. She was very much this loner outsider, and now they're like this group, which is part of the fun of sitcoms yeah, and yeah. TV shows in general. So many shows are about family or found family in a way, and mm -hmm. you really get these tight-knit groups of characters who go through mm -hmm. a lot together. I really like that we've got, we've got a nice cast of characters. Ramona needs love advice. Jay Money immediately says, get a cat, because he wants <laughs> to go back to Smoochin'. <laughs> yep. He wants to get stepped on. Um yeah. <laughs> But Ramona's problem is that uh Marius Marius Yo, Japanese pop star of the band Sexy Zone. Which we we always say it like that, but in this episode Ramona goes, My boyfriend Marius, and Rocky says Marius Yo of Japanese pop group Sexy Zone. Yeah. Which We've talked about Rocky being the audience surrogate and that she criticizes the show. Yeah. But I guess she's the audience surrogate now and that she just literally says what we're thinking. Yes. Yeah. That's what I've been saying this entire time is Rocky just says what we're thinking. And it's not just these guys are crazy now. It's Marius Yo of Japanese boy band Sexy Zone. Hold on. Hold on. Is Rocky just like what would happen if you put in like the three of us as an entity into the show, but also made us a goth girl? Cause she immediately, <laughs> she immediately partners up with J Money. I know. I, feel I was gonna like, say. Oh my god. I was gonna say she 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 criticizes the show. Yeah. She starts saying what we're thinking. And she and likes she's J hanging Money. out with J Money. <laughs> yeah. I would one hundred. Would you smooch J Money if you were in the show? Uh, oh, for sure. J, yeah. J, J yeah, Money needs it. some honey. <laughs> Without a question. 
Wait. Also, the clear implication that J that Rocky is a an unapologetic J-pop fan who knows Mary <laughs> yes. is yo. <laughs> well, I don't know if the implication was she's a J-pop fan or just Ramona talks about Marius a lot. I thought oh, of it yeah, more yeah, as the second one. Probably. Yeah. I thought it was the second one because she like has this long thing and she says and she says like you know I get all that right. Um, mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. I really love that we still have this thread running of Ramona dating a real actual pop star. That's so good. <laughs> they could have dropped that like in one episode, but they kept it going this long. And that's yes. wonderful. Yes. But yeah, she's upset because her her Japanese pop star boyfriend has been taking longer and longer to respond to her texts. And Rocky tells her, you got to stand up for yourself. You got to tell him. How you really feel, or else you gotta dump him yep. for Chad Brad Bradley, the coolest kid in school. <laughs> yeah. Coolest kid in school. He's so cool. He's so cool. They must wait till later. Yeah, she says you gotta you gotta stand up for yourself. She goes out to go help Ramona. J Money says, "Hey, weren't we gonna do some smooching?" Rocky says, "Get a cat." No, uh, Ramona. No, Ramona, says Ramona does. Ramona says, "Get a cat." Okay. Yeah. yeah. It would be funny either way, but yeah. It just felt like such a rocky thing. It does feel like a rocky yeah. thing. Yeah. But I like Ramona having her come up and so that's very good. Yeah. But we cut from our favorite characters to another one of our favorite characters, Fernando. Yeah. Fernando, who has at this point in the series just taken up the role of being Tommy's caretaker. He's he's like Tommy's sitter, which again, I I, I really I love that. It. I like that for him. That just yeah. it Tommy has been such a non-entity and Fernando is this guy hanging out at the edge of the family that it actually brings him in in a really great way. Yes. And of course, Fernando, (laughs) this man child has really great chemistry with a baby. (laughs) (laughs) But not with the not with the 10 year old. No, no. With the 10 year old. They are enemies. They are. Yes. Sworn mortal enemies. They are in the new film Mortal Kombat where they will face off and, oh, and Max I want that. Will, will rip out <laughs> Fernando's heart. <laughs> that's, that's, the that's the sequel to Godzilla vs. Kong, Max vs. Fernando. Yes. <laughs> Who will be the true king of the monsters? <laughs> the famous race car driver or the intellectual 10-year-old. Yep. <laughs> But Fernando is drinking Mr. Rudy Zero, his favorite soft drink. Guys, it's all of the taste without any of the calories. Really? Yes. What a deal. Oh my God. What a deal. Mr. Rudy Zero. Um, Jesse doesn't know Fernando's name. That's a whole bit where he's calling Fernando Francisco. And Fernando's like, but my name's Fernando. You can say it. They do the they do the thing from Friends. The Je m'appelle thing, but yeah. it's with Fernando. Yeah, Fer, yeah. Nando, Francisco. I, 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 I'm not a fan of that joke. A part of it, it feels a little bit to me like, oh, isn't it weird that Fernando does not have an... <laughs> <laughs> Look at his weird name, Fernando. Yeah. It's a very <laughs> common name. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, couldn't you just been called like Mike instead? Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't you just be saying Mike here all the time? It, it's me, our fav, our your favorite character, famous race car, Mike Hernandez Guerrero, <laughs> Fernandez Guerrero. Mike here. Hey everyone, I'm back. Mike here. My oh, ears Mike were burning. Mike is back. Hey Mike. Hey Mike. I heard you were discussing names. Yes. Yeah. And I think you know what my favorite name is. Fernando. Elliot. Oh, uh, that's that's, just, that's yeah. a good one. It's up there. I, remember I just that now. I just like the sound of it. Anyway, Mike mm-hmm. here. Uh, <laughs> if if you have any more questions to ask me, hey Mike. Yeah. How am I gonna die? Mike here. <laughs> when I look into your future, I see many things: joy, heartbreak. I'm there, Mike here, and. I hate to say it, but I think you're gonna go out with in a fiery roller coaster accident. Damn. No. What a fate. Mike here. Zach, how do you feel about that? Harrison, you're fine. You die peacefully. Oh, that's great to know. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, I think I'm just gonna avoid any and all roller coasters. Uh, but, uh, 
It is in the avoidance of our fate that in the end we seal it. Mike here. Bye, I have to go. Thank you, Prophet Mike. Wait, Mike, are you saying that I'm going to be walking around and all of a sudden the roller coaster is just going to fall on me like in the cartoons? I can't hear you, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mike is not here now, um, but uh, Fernando... And he just had to drop that wisdom. Yeah, Prophet Mike... Just had to drop a little wisdom on us on how to live but our best lives. Tommy and little and little Pammy are not getting along. Yeah. So Jesse Jesse takes Pamela and they start doing an Elvis dance. Yeah. And Fernando says, "Huh, you think that's good? I taught Tommy the J Lo booty shake." <laughs> and they start shake that ass, doing Tommy. That. I think Fernando wins. I think the J Lo booty shake beats. Elvis yes. Oh, for uh, sure, yeah. No, hands down, yes. Hands down. Oh, yeah. It's not even close. But Steph is perturbed because her dream included strange men dancing. Mm -hmm. Although I'd argue there's nothing strange about this. She knows both of these people. Yeah. This is yeah. completely in character for both of them. They are very strange, though, so. <laughs> they are strange men, but this is so I guess they are strange men dancing, but this is not strange for them, is what right, I'm saying. Yeah, right. True, true. But next scene Danny is negotiating their wake up USA contract. Right. right. Um, and they want more money, but Jesse he wants is the yeah. money. But Jesse's also saying, but you know, don't piss him off. Mm -hmm. And that's basically the scene. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah well, I, there's there's something that I really like in this scene, which is uh, Jesse says something about like, ah, you want to get a sweet deal, and Danny says, I'll tell you who's got a sweet deal, my friend. You, <laughs> Becky goes and makes all the money, and you just get to stay home doing nothing. Mm. And it was almost like they were setting up a body switch movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I thought, <laughs> I thought Jesse was gonna be like me. Look at you, Mr. Big Hotshot. I wish I had your life. And then they like both reached for something. There was a flash of lightning and they went, whoa. <laughs> and then they switch bodies and then they realize that they both have it, that they both have it bad. Yeah. And then they switch bodies again in a f another flash of light. Mm -hmm. Yep. A lot of body switching lightning going around. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what that is. Steph has traded bodies with Timmy like four times already. There's something in the lightning. It just keeps happening. F Fernando switched bodies with a 10 year old. Nobody noticed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this leads into DJ's prom scene. Yeah, she walks down the yeah. stairs in a dress. The audience applauds. Yep. No, For it's way like, too long. Yeah, yeah. Like DJ always looks pretty good. Yeah. And she's worn nice clothing a lot. It's not anything special. It's just, yeah, it's just wearing but a dress. There's a lot of applause. This is the sort of thing that makes us frustrated with all the applauding. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, Steve arrives and he's Steve shows very up. dapper. Yep. Steve. Steve, our favorite boy, other than J Money and other than Fernando. <laughs> Our third favorite boy. Um, but Steve tells us that, or tells DJ that they can't go to the restaurant because there's a huge fog and it's not safe to drive. More of Steph's dream is coming true. Maybe she is a prophet. And guys, I know we came up with a spinoff, but I think she needs to use her future predicting precog abilities to fight crime. Yes. She has that Fighting special crime. sixth sense. She can see it coming before it happens. Yes. But she can't do anything to stop it because, you know, if you try to stop fate, then... Uh, yeah, yeah. If you, if, you, if, you, if you try to avoid dying in a fiery roller coaster accident, you're just going to seal your fate. So in every episode, she just, like, goes up to people and tells them what's going to happen and that it happens anyway. Yeah, guys, this episode has a theme. Not this episode of the TV show. This, the ep this episode of the podcast has a theme, which is... This episode is all about fate. <laughs> it's all about how you can't avoid your fate. Were we fated to do this podcast? Yes. <laughs> we tried to not do it, and we just couldn't. Yeah. I mean, like, we were held at gunpoint 
and yeah. forced to make this podcast. I don't I don't know if you guys remember that. I don't remember the gunpoint. I did get a lot of threatening letters. Oh, oh was it was it no, was that just me? Bad. I think it might have been different for each of us. I got a lot of letters, like real cutout letters. At first I thought it was just some like art project thing. And then I was like, <laughs> hang on, let me read these. And then it said, like, we have your son, and you yeah, thought it was, it was really like, weird because we, you don't have a son? We have your son. I sent back a letter saying, I don't have a son. They said, oh, shit, we meant we have, like, your family. Mm. I got blackmailed. Uh, you know, there's some dirt on me you guys don't want to know, you know, from my time back in the war. <laughs> <laughs> when you were in the war, right? You, yeah. I, I know, I know you went through a lot in the war, and I know you don't like talking about it. Yeah. Though I, I do have one question, Harrison. What? Uh, which is, uh, how does it feel to take a man's life? It never gets easy. Every night, I, I wake up streaming. But anyway, they say, "Why? Oh, you can't go to the restaurant. Why don't you have your romantic dinner here?" Here in the full house. In the full so house. Great. We don't have to have another set. That, that's an idea that. Get it? Because it's like the name of the show and also the name of the DJ. <laughs> you know, I've never thought about it, but yes, that's true. I, just, I, I, I for one, just got that after three seasons. <laughs> I just got that. Uh, so, yeah, they do that. Uh, yep. And it is just. It, I mean, there's some good moments in this, but. Uh, yeah, guys, it's. it's a comedic masterpiece. Bob Saget had the best voice. Yes. They all tried yes. different voices. We, we cut to, they have decorated the living room like a restaurant. They just had a lot of fancy chairs and accoutrement. Yeah, we, it, it, like, we had like an establishing shot of the restaurant and immediately Mark was just like, did they just have all this <laughs> laying around? That was like yeah. immediately. They just yeah. have this. Wow, this house really is I full. Mean, if they to just to be had fair, there was also stuff. like a, a thing before where they were like, Jesse was like, I don't know, are we really gonna like turn the living room into a restaurant? And then Danny's just like, uh, Are you like, are you new here? It's kind of like we kind of do this like every week at yeah. eight thirty, seven thirty Central, <laughs> only on network. And then he turns uh, into the camera and just <laughs> stares at us. For solid for five minutes, yeah. For a solid straight. five minutes, yeah. And then uh, everyone's like, "Oh, Jesse, you can be the maitre d." And he's like, "I don't want to be the maitre d." And then Aunt Becky kisses him, and he's like, "Okay, she's very convincing." And the audience cheers at the kiss, and we're yeah. like, you, "They've been kissing there's for a, there's thirty a whole years." Lot of smooching They're this episode. married. There's a lot of smooching. It's not impressive to kiss them when you're married. You've seen this before in the hit show Full House. <laughs> I, I, for one, was really upset when I had my first kiss and there was no applause. You're hurt. The, the applause, it's hurting me. Have mercy. Is what I say. <laughs> I get it. I say that all oh the time. Lanta. Nobody else has I ever get said it. that. It's like the thing yeah. that that one guy says yeah. in that one show. I'm just like, have mercy. And then they keep doing it. And I'm like, how rude. I asked very nicely. And then they keep doing it. And I'm like, you got it, dude. Oh, my Lanta. <laughs> And then they keep telling you to do it, and you're like, guys, cut it out. And I'm like, cut it out. And they keep doing it. And I'm like, did I do that? And they're like, no. And, then, <laughs> and you're like, did I do that? And they're like, and then they keep the doing show. it. And I'm like, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea that it just goes to other shows, catchphrases. Bazinga. <laughs> Bazinga. Uh, no, you don't. You don't. Un you don't understand. He says he, he he tells him the same thing, and he says bazinga, and it's like the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he turns himself into a pickle, and he calls himself Pickle Rick, and he said bazinga. <laughs> 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 anyway, Jesse is dressed up like a maitre d. Okay. Uh, um, he is he is doing an accent. I, I I he's not French, but he's doing a voice. Yeah. Um, he's doing voice. a voice. He it's like asks, vaguely European. Vaguely yeah. European, or just sort of erudite. Um, he and, uh, he tells them they're all booked up, and he, they, and Steve needs to you know grease the wheels a little bit to get a table. Yeah. There is one table, but Steve... The one table that is empty. Steve pays him the money. Jesse tries to sell him flowers. It's one for $10, two for 20 Steve says, that's not a deal. And Jesse says, like, oh, are you disrespecting the lady? But I kind of wanted him to go, like, no, it's not a deal. It's just I'm telling you. 
One, <laughs> each flower costs ten dollars. Uncle Jesse is just trying to rob Steve. He's trying Uncle to Jesse rob. Just Steve. trying to rob Steve yep. because because like he gives him the twenty and uh, Jesse's like, yeah, no, I did that to make it seem more like an actual restaurant. And Steve's like, oh, cool. So am I gonna get my money back? And immediately he's just like, no. <laughs> so he's just trying to steal money from Steve because it's one for ten, two for twenty, and Steve's like, uh, do you have change for a hundred? And he's like, no, take the flowers from your own garden. They're yours now. Do you think Jesse's okay? <laughs> no. No, he is not. He really needs no, the money. No, he is not. He really <laughs> needs the money. All that time with Pamela, it's getting him stressed. He needs something to take the edge off. Yeah. Like, just a little something. Just a little something. <laughs> well, later on, he does admit that he bought a jet ski, so... <laughs> oh, right, maybe. Maybe he is falling into debt or something. He's having a midlife crisis. Yeah. But they're all doing characters. Joey comes out to use the chef. He has prepared le poisson tubular or fish sticks in in our filthy American vernacular mm-hmm. <laughs> um, over um, macaroni and cheese. He also says that with a fancy thing. Yes, a macaron- mac and yes but I forget what it was. Danny <laughs> is the sommelier. He is also not doing a French accent. But, but he's doing continue. a very good voice. It is a, not French, he's, but it's he, very good. He's doing this sort of thing. Yes, yes. it was so good. He was, has he's doing his best. best Mike here impersonation. Mike here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mike is a small yeah. Yes. Uh, and he's got he's got a box of only their finest wine. A literal box. That's the exact voice. He's really he's really the best at it. He does the best voice of all of them. It's really good. It's basically good. what Mark is doing right now. I'm, I, I appreciate that. Thank you, Zach. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you think I'm doing it well. Um, finest box wine. Uh, Aunt Becky comes out with, with a mustache, and she's doing a British accent for some mm-hmm. reason. It's not, I just feel like it's not as specific to character as some of the other voices. But she also has a mustache, and she just gives them room temperature water. Yep. <laughs> Everyone's favorite temperature, room temperature. <laughs> you couldn't have put it in the fridge for like at least the five minutes it took to cook those fish sticks and mac and cheese. <laughs> you couldn't yeah, just get true. ice from the freezer. That is true. Yeah, that too. That's you couldn't true. get ice. <laughs> Come on, Becky, get your head in the game. Also, <laughs> I love that they embraced the seat college senior lifestyle and used box wine. <laughs> yep. Boxed wine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just... Not Our any choice. boxed wine, Stephanie's boxed wine. <laughs> oh, do, do they establish that? Wine. I forgot that detail. Yeah, it's that DJ oh has like a throw on like, oh, course. that's Steph, so make sure you save her some or else she's going to kill you. <laughs> oh, man, Steph is a mess. Oh, no. I love it. How did we not notice how much of a mess Steph was in the original watch? Though? I know, it's so weird. Know. It was something that we only really noticed upon rewatch, yeah. that Steph is just a mess. This is her whole character, and it's really consistent throughout the show <laughs> oddly consistent it is... was a choice <laughs> yeah it's i love it i love, I love that it that's her character oh it's great as we've established our favorite characters are the ones who are just pathetic yeah, yeah. the only real exception being our good himbo boyfriend Jim- jimmy gibbler but he's right. not in this episode no jesse comes out with a guitar and he asks for requests they say we request you go away and he does, and then we don't see any of the date. Play forever. Yeah. You should play forever. Do you know Wonderwall? <laughs> anyway, here's Wonderwall. Play four minutes and 33 seconds. Fun fact, Wonderwall does sync up with the full house theme song. Oh, yeah, that's right. The the Neil Cesariga. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, my God. That, that thing is magical. Yeah. But... Um, but. I just think it's weird that we have spent episodes and episodes building up this date, and then we don't see even just, like, one moment from the I date. I know, right? What the heck? Yeah. This feels like a big thing, but we just cut right to the cleanup. Yeah. I felt like we Pretty should see much. something, some touching moment between DJ and Steve. Um, but instead, it's the cleanup. And guys, things... Aren't going great. Yeah, they're going pretty Everything bad. Everything bad happens right here in this room. <laughs> Over the span of like literally five minutes. Yeah. So like, hold on, let's, let's list them off rapid fire style. Okay. I, I have them all written down. 
Do you, okay, Mark, okay, go, go for it. Yeah. Rapid fire. Uh, <laughs> Lightning round. Danny and Becky are being replaced in their job by Mario or Lopez because they asked for too much money. What is specifically? <laughs> okay, keep going. Joey's wife got a job on a cruise ship for six months, so Joey is going to be all alone with his kids. Oh my god. Marius wants to see other people. Marius Yo of the band Sexy Zone? Marius Yo of the, of the Japanese boy band Sexy Zone wants to see other people. He does not want to remain exclusive with Ramona. Um, even though they were smooching, Rocky is not. J- Rocky tells Jay Money she is not his girlfriend. They are discontinuing Mr. Rudy Zero. No! That's the worst one That's of them the all. That's the worst one. Fernando's very upset about it. Uh, Steve possibly got a job in L.A., so that means he might have to move from San Francisco. For the Lakers. For the Lakers. he knows Magic Johnson. He knows Magic Johnson. He got a job. He might become their, their foot doctor. Tommy and Pamela have gum in their hair. And Rose is Rose is not coming to Max's party because CJ hates DJ. Oh my god. Literally I, I've lost track of all of these. Okay. And and this is why I wrote them down. And yeah. Kimmy doesn't think she's pregnant. <sighs> oh wait, Mark, can you count up how many of those there are? How many things we get over the span of like five minutes? Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. so many plot lines to resolve yeah. in literally the next episode. Yep. <laughs> One because guess what? Two, the episode ends there. <laughs> three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my god! Nine, nine things. Nine in like plots. five minutes. I could have. I could have miscounted. Let me just one second. Oh my god! Okay. That is my pen. To be fair, some of them are not really gonna get resolved or yeah. like very quick. Okay, like Mr. One. Rudy is not. Gonna like get Mr. Resolved. Rudy, the gum in the hair. Right, they're not gonna. The hair. Yeah, that's like, not a huge deal. Marius Yo of the band Sexy Zone. Ramona's just gonna date Chad Brad Bradley. He's the coolest kid in school. No, it's right. nine. It's nine. It's fully nine. Um, oh everyone has something bad. Yeah. Do we do we want to jump into any of these in more? De- I my my one thing that I want to say is um, there's a moment where Becky says to Jesse, you know, well, I guess I'm gonna be home with with Pamela and you're going to have to get and he like doesn't want her to finish the sentence and she says a real job and I when they were saying like Becky's the breadwinner and you're a stay at home parent I thought they were setting up like the cliche kind of backwards gender thing of like Jesse feels inadequate and now he wants to get a job or something no Jesse is totally fine with his situation but no he's fully he's he fully loves not having a job <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> And his worst great. night, his worst nightmare is to be forced to get a job. So that's ten things. Uncle Jesse now has to get a job. That's yeah, a ten. I thing. was I was including it in the first one of they're losing. Their I just want to Mario round Lopez. it up to ten because ten's a more whole, uh, ten's just a better number. And to be fair, Mario Lopez is great. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Probably much better than <laughs> Danny. Yeah. To be a, fair, like deservedly so. Like you like. I'm I'm up on Mario Lopez. Also, I just wanted to mention like there's a really good J Money line where when Rocky says I'm not your girlfriend, he says something about like, well, how can we be dating but you're not my girlfriend? <laughs> yeah, it's like how can we be dating but you're not my girlfriend? We literally made out in my room earlier, and DJ's like, you did what in the where? <laughs> that was a really it. weird conversation it. to have right there. In yeah, front in front of his mom. Yeah, hey, in yeah. front of everyone. Yeah. yeah. But it is J Money, so I don't know what yeah. I expect. I also think it's funny that just like in passing glance, he was like, "Oh yeah, my good friend Magic Johnson of the L.A. Lakers." I thought they were gonna make a a joke about that, like couching something like my good friend Magic, um, <laughs> Magic J. I call him. Um, I don't call him MJ. He's still kind of you know yeah. Michael Jordan. He doesn't you know they're not really all that close. There's still yeah. you know the rivalry going on there. Yeah. So I call him Magic. Um, we're on a first name basis, me and Magic. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Kimmy, the the big one we end on is Kimmy doesn't think she's pregnant. When she was pregnant with Ramona, she felt really awful. And she tells everyone she's been feeling fine, which makes her worry. And she says all this that makes her worry she's not pregnant. And she says all this right as Stephanie enters. And that's how we end mm-hmm. on a big cliffhanger. Empire Strikes Back style. It's like Return of the Jedi. This is what Zach said, and I corrected him because I'm an asshole. I well, I on purpose just said the first Star Wars movie I could think of. 
because I think it'd be funny. Caravan but, of Courage, an Ewok yeah, adventure. But, you know, this episode may have ended on a cliffhanger, but this podcast does not, which is why we're going to go into our favorite recurring segment that we do every episode. So it's not really recurring. It's just a normal segment. Anyway, it's time for Sad Boy of the Week. Sad Boy of the Week. Ooh. I feel really weird about this one because I feel like... Like, a lot happened at the end, but it feels like nothing happened. Yes. This entire episode. Nothing happened. So, I feel like we have a lot less to work with than we usually do. We discussed watching the next episode because of the big cliffhanger. And a part of me was like, maybe we should because I don't think much happened in this episode. Yeah. But... I think there are some nominees. Yeah, I've got well, one. Well, I know we had automatically said Ramona. Ramona? Because of Ramona. the situation where she watches yeah. Jay Money and his and yep. and his Rocky. Not his Rocky. Jay Money and Rocky. He, he doesn't own Rocky. <laughs> well, I was gonna. I was in the middle of saying his girlfriend, and then yeah. I realized, wait, they're oh, not yeah, dating. Yeah. So I said his Rocky, and yep. I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> yep. They're all a little sad to a certain extent. They're all very sad this episode. But but not quite in the way that we like them to be. So I think can it's I, Ramona. Can I, I think also maybe J Money. Fernando? I think Fernando. Can I nominate Fernando because out of all the Fernando. situations at the end, yes. his was by far like the most pathetic. Yes. Yes. I think Fernando. Yep. I'll nominate Jesse. Jesse. So we got Ramona. I think we got J Money, right? Yeah. We got Fernando. We got and Fernando. Jesse. We got Jesse. I think that's good, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's good. That's to me. Enough. Yeah. Okay, who should I start with? Start with J Money because it's always yeah. J Money. Yeah, let's start with J Money because it's always J Money. Uh, J Money uh, is studying. He starts getting some smooches. Yeah. But his smooching is interrupted by <laughs> Ramona's actual personal drama. <laughs> Uh, and he does not want to listen to Ramona. He just wants to get back to smooching. <laughs> Ramona steals his girlfriend. Ramona steals his girlfriend. Um, he tells her to get a cat. He says the phrase I love, which is magic is happening. <laughs> <laughs> love it. But then uh, in the end, he finds out like that they're dating, but she's not his girlfriend. So maybe they aren't dating and they were just smooching. <gasps> And he's having this conversation right in front of his mom. He is definitely the type of person to say I love you on the first date. Yeah. <laughs> I, I may have mentioned this before, but there's a joke I love in Futurama where it's like Fry does something nice for Leela. And she says like, wow, Fry, that was actually really thoughtful. And he said, OK, so are we dating now? <laughs> <laughs> I And I just I, I love that for Jay Money. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's his case. I think that's yeah, everything that's that it. happens that's with him. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I guess Ramona because why not? Yeah. Ramona is having relationship troubles. She walks mm-hmm. in on her, I guess, two best friends right now. Yeah, um, smooching, and they're busy. So she says, "Okay, I'll wait." And she just sits <laughs> she down she while they finish down. smooching. Oh my god! And oh my and god. and it takes and even the Rocky's like, "Wait, we need to stop and help Ramona." It takes them a while. <laughs> yeah, her famous. Japanese pop star boyfriend is ignoring her. She's told by J Money of all people to get a cat. <laughs> As if J Money has the right. <laughs> yeah, disrespected. Uh, and I think this is the other part of her case that I relate really, because then Marius Yo of Japanese boy band Sexy Zone says he thinks they should see other people. He doesn't want to be exclusive. Because they're 5,000 miles apart. Yeah, and she has this whole line about like, what? We're only 5,000 miles apart and he is a famous Japanese boy band member. (laughs) So it's this whole thing where like, I love, like it is very sad for her and I feel for her, but it's also this this thing of like, yeah, I guess guess no one could have seen this coming, Ramona. (laughs) Yeah. (sighs) And then uh, I guess... We'll do uh, Uncle Jesse. Uncle Jesse uh, is, let's see, he's ignoring his wife and baby, but like also good for him because he's been very much stuck with the baby. Yeah. Not that he should be ignoring his wife. That's a bad thing, but (laughs) you know what I mean? Yeah. Even though he doesn't really want to, he is forced to play sommelier. Not sommelier. He's forced to play... Maitre d'. Maitre d'. He's he's really getting into it, perhaps betraying some of his financial problems. He's very afraid of his wife blowing their or his, I guess, brother-in-law, uh, 
blowing their negotiations, mm-hmm. um, which then happens. So in the end, he uh, is for he's going to have to get a, j- a real job, which is his worst nightmare. And uh, also he reveals and we just had a kid. Don't they know we just had a kid? And also I just bought a jet ski. <laughs> So he's going through some kind of crisis. Whenever a man gets yeah. a jet ski, that you know there's a problem. Yep. Um, and then Fernando, who makes a big deal about his favorite soft drink, Mr. Rudy Zero, has a little bit of a competition with Uncle Jesse. Uncle Jesse cannot remember, does not remember his name. I think willfully. I think he's trying to disrespect Fernando. Which is not cool. It's not cool. Um, and then, guys, they discontinue Mr. Rudy Zero. No. Perhaps the biggest blow of any of these. Okay. So, now that we're going into voting, I would like to make a case for... Just make a case against J Money and Ramona. Okay. Because, in my mind, okay. J Money J Money got some smooches. J Money got which some is smooches. a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> So, I, he he got to win this episode. I I don't I don't want to go. I, with that. I agree. And then Ramona, I agree. Ramona, despite the fact that she has broken up with her boyfriend Mary Yisio of the Japanese boy band Sexy Zone, is now free for Chad Brad Bradley, the coolest <laughs> kid in school. Also, she dated Mary Yisio of the Japanese boy band Sexy Zone. That too. This is true. Not many people. <laughs> That she knows can say that. This is I feel like true. it should go to either Uncle Jesse or Fernando. And I was going to say Fernando, and then you were making the case for Uncle Jesse, and I was like, no, this is a very good case as well. I, I'm thinking I'm thinking Uncle Jesse. He was very sad. Yeah, like, I was going to say Fernando because of the the uh, the discontinued thing and how, like, his thing at the end was, like, by far the most pathetic. But I think Uncle Jesse had a lot more just throughout the course of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. I here yeah, here here's my thing, because you immediately removed J Money and Ramona. I was actually between Ramona and Uncle Jesse. Um, That's what I yeah. was thinking too. I mean, I would have done Ramona over J Money yeah. because of that one scene where she was just like watching. I, I think it's it's her yeah. watching. It's her going, who could have known my <laughs> My very <laughs> famous boyfriend in who who could have known it Japan. wouldn't last between my very famous boyfriend who lives in Japan and me, <laughs> a normal person who lives in San Francisco. I thought that was very funny and very good. That was very good. Yeah, it was great. I thought she was really great in this episode. Um, but I think I think Uncle Jesse has to take it. I think it. we're giving it to Uncle Jesse this episode. Uncle Jesse yeah. from Full House. Yeah. I think it's Uncle Jesse from Uncle Full House. Uncle Jesse. Yeah. Do we have to change right, his it. name on the leaderboard to Uncle Jesse from Full House? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Danny Tanny, Uncle Jesse from Full House. Okay. Canada's favorite son, Dave Coulier. Yeah. Well, I think that's it for this episode. <laughs> oh, boy. What an episode. Oh, anyway. Um, anyway, follow us on social media. We are at Fullest House Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I hope everybody listening has a lovely day. I'm Mark Green. I'm Harrison Bloom. And I'm Zach Horowitz. And may your houses be fuller, and may your Mary Poppins be Latino. That is a reference to a line we did not mention, but it means Fernando. Mario Pampino! Oh.